From the front page of the Anchor Statesman, November 1st, 1916. Headline, No Compromise with Trolleymen. General Manager Sutherland denies rumors of a proposed settlement. War to the end is to be the slogan of the Yonkers Railroad Company in its fight with its striking employees. General Manager Sutherland vigorously denied the truth of rumors emanating from New York City that a compromise is about to be effected between the strikers and Frederick W. Whitridge, president of the Third Avenue Railway System, of which the Yonkers Railroad is a part. These reports are absolutely groundless, he said this morning. Would the company be keeping 40 men in the barns waiting for the expiration of the 15 days if it was going to settle the whole thing? These rumors give an erroneous impression. Strike leaders exhort the men to hold out for one day more, telling them they can go back to work tomorrow. And the men greet me with smiling faces, believing that in a few days I will be their boss again. I tell you, we're going to fight this thing to a finish. Five cars are running this morning, and there will be a sixth before night, it was announced. They are running from the subway terminal at Van Cortland Park to Seanart Place. Two cars are running as far south of the city line near Carroll Avenue. It is proposed to run two more all the way from 242nd Street to Roberts Avenue before the day is over. According to statistics obtained from motormen of trolleys, the number of passengers who ride on the cars is increasing daily. Applications were received this morning from several men qualified under the 15-day ordinance. But the railway company is to make a thorough investigation to test the ability of these applicants. We'll take no chances, said Mr. Sutherland. He added that the doors of the company are still open to the men if they wish to return to work under the conditions offered by Mr. Whitridge. Headline, Success Claimed by Both Sides. Conflicting Reports Received as to Fighting in Eastern Theater of War. Important successes for both the Teutonic and Romanian armies are claimed in today's dispatches relative to the fighting along the Romanian-Transylvanian frontier. Berlin announces an Austro-German victory south of Kronstadt where the Romanian positions and also the Pretia Road were captured together with 10 cannon and 17 machine guns. An unofficial Bucharest dispatch declares the Austro-German forces have retired from the region of Kamalung and were pursued over the frontier by the Romanians who wiped out four hostile battalions. A fourth Russian attack on the troops of Prince Leopold, defending the approaches to Lemberg, has been repulsed, Berlin declares, and records heavy losses for the Russians. French again exerted pressure on the Somme front, advancing last night near Le Beuf, since Paris. Berlin records the failure of British attempts to advance at two points. The Germans are on the defensive at Salis Salis but Paris reports they were defeated. The British have pushed further into the Bulgarian lines northeast of Salonika, capturing a village and 300 prisoners, says London. A Bucharest official report declares the Romanians are continuing their pursuit of the Austro-Germans in Jules Valley and have captured more than 600 men in much war material. Petrograd concedes Teutonic gains south of the Rothen Therm Pass region, the Russian war office announcing the Teutonic occupation of villages a dozen miles south of the border. The Russians also admit superior Teutonic forces have pressed back the Russians in Galicia. Headline, Those Submarine Attacks, Immediate Investigation Being Made by United States. Secretary of State Lansing authorized a formal statement today that the progress of the political campaign would not affect the investigation of the submarine attack, and there has been no change in the United States government's policy. And that's the news from Yonkers 100 years ago today.